Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over are the top 10 reasons why you may show a pressure switch error code on a gas furnace. So this is a natural gas furnace, but even if it was a propane furnace, if you are showing a pressure switch error code, it does not necessarily mean that the pressure switch is the problem. It's just saying that the pressure switch is sensing the problem, and in some situations, it actually is the pressure switch itself. So I'm going to go over the top 10 reasons what the causes could be. Before I get into the top 10 reasons, I just want to show you how the pressure switch works, and I also want to show you how we know there's a problem with this particular unit. This happens to be a carrier furnace, and the carrier furnace error codes are made up of two digits. The first digit is the short flashes, and the second digit is the long flashes. So you're going to see three short flashes, that's the first digit, so that's three, and the second digit is one. So 31 is indicating that there's a pressure switch issue. So the pressure switch's job is to verify that there is a vacuum because of the inducer motor, and it's the proper vacuum level. So this is called a pressure switch, but it's actually measuring the vacuum level. In this case, it's a differential pressure switch because there's a positive and a negative. Now that doesn't mean that this side's positive, it just means it's a, a lesser uh, vacuum than this side is. So it's taking a differential across there. If you have a furnace with just a single tube, that's just measuring uh, the just the negative uh, pressure, which will be vacuum. And it's verifying that the inducer is operating correctly and it's getting the exhaust gases out and that the condensate here is not making it up past, uh, past where this tube is connected at. So it's a safety device. And what you have is from the control board, you have 24 volts heading to the pressure switch. This happens to be a normally open pressure switch which means that the voltage comes in here and it does not connect to this side until this pressure switch reads the proper negative pressure so once it connects to here it goes to the control board and says hey you know we're, we're reading the correct negative pressure pressure switches operate at a very very low pressure so in this case it's 0.18 water column and this one when you look this model number up it actually operates at negative 1.81 inch water column. So it's actually 27.6 water column for one PSI. So it's very, very low pressure. To read such a low pressure, we use a water column manometer. In this case, this is a single port uh, water column manometer. This is a two port differential manometer. And this is a differential manometer with a built in pump. And you could actually take that pressure switch out and test it with a tool like this outside of the furnace to see if that's the actual problem. But I have other videos on that if you want to see the pressure switch testing with a digital water column manometer. So the top 10 reasons are this exhaust pipe could be clogged. So in the case of a PVC exhaust pipe, it could be a bird's nest or it could be that this is not sloped properly. So it has to have a quarter inch of pitch going upwards until it exits the building so that any water that's created during the flame process of this 90% efficient furnace ends up coming back down into the inducer motor housing. Now it's normal for a 90% efficient furnace to have condensate created during the flame process just because it's a byproduct of the flame and it's extracting so much heat out of it that the water starts condensing in the, the heat exchanger area and it can condensate actually in this exhaust pipe. So what you may have happen and what I've seen is when the pitching goes it comes out of the furnace, it goes up for a while, then it comes back down, and then it goes back up again. You have a huge puddle of water that's sitting in the exhaust pipe, and sometimes the furnace works and sometimes it doesn't when the water evaporates. And you, you have to have that pitch properly, otherwise it's going to close off the exhaust pipe. Another issue could be a clogged intake combustion pipe. So this right here could have, once again, a bird's nest or something like that actually in the pipe, blocking it off. Uh, it could be separated somewhere and, and blocked off in that section. Or there could also be a clogged heat exchanger, which would be a real, real big problem. A pressure switch error code could surface if the inducer motor is not even turning on. And so what you could do is with the power off, you go ahead and disconnect this uh, connection right here. And you may smell something burnt here. So the, the motor itself could be burnt out. And if it had a resistance reading between the hot wire 
and the ground, then that would indicate that there's an issue. The other thing is this could be stuck right here. It may, it may have, if it's older, it may have oil ports. And if it was not oiled for, say, a year or two years or something like that, and it has oil ports, and that's going to end up having the bearings inside damaged up. So this inducer motor uh, could be broken itself. Another issue could be that the inducer motor itself is okay, but it's not turning on because the capacitor is bad. So if you have what's called a PSE inducer motor, a permanent split capacitor, inducer motor then you could have a capacitor that's bad now a lot of times people miss this capacitor because it doesn't look uh, like a larger one that they're used to seeing on blower motors and in the outdoor units in order to test this capacitor we have the the power off right now and I turned it off at the disconnect switch as well and we just pull the tabs off of the capacitor we go ahead and short that out and then we would read our capacitance level in microfarads. So we're going to go ahead and hold that here. We want to give it a little bit of time in order to get an accurate measurement. And you see we read 2.9. This capacitor happens to be a 3 MFD capacitor, so that's within uh, plus or minus about 5-6%. So that capacitor is good. Another problem could be the inducer motor wheel is broken off inside the housing. So this right here, this motor is off of a 80% efficient package unit and this just rotted off just due to the condensate in the exhaust. In other cases where you have a plastic inducer motor housing you may also have a plastic wheel and sometimes you'll see the veins end up breaking off or the wheel basically breaking apart. I haven't necessarily seen that with this uh, brand. This, th these wheels are pretty good but with other brands I've seen the actual uh, veins break off and then just fly right out through the exhaust pipe. And in that case, even though the inducer motor is running, it's not able to have the negative pressure in order for the pressure switch to close. Another thing that could be the problem is the actual pressure switch itself. Maybe inside, maybe there's moisture that got in and the diaphragm got stuck, or maybe there's a rip in the diaphragm inside. And so you need to end up replacing the pressure switch. But you would need to see a, a water column measurement higher than what the pressure switch is rated for before thinking that the pressure switch is the problem. Now, you want to go ahead and read a negative water column pressure that is deeper than what the pressure switch says. So, in this case, it's a negative 1.8 inch water column. So, if you read with your water column manometer a differential of negative 2 or negative 2.5 and this was still not closing, then you would know that the pressure switch is the actual problem. Another issue that you might have is the electrical connections on the pressure switch or over at the control board may be loose. So that could be a problem. You want to make sure that you turn the power off to the furnace in order to check your electrical connections. In this case, you see that that's pretty tight. In this case, you see that this is very loose. So see, so you can actually put it back in and, and through there. So what you need to do with that is you want to go ahead and crimp the speed connector down in order for it to have a tight connection here. And just remember that if you can't find a problem, the rule is to always make sure you do something. You know, make sure that you're checking all your electrical connections. Make sure uh, that your, your power is getting to the correct location, such as this right here. should have 24 volts coming into the pressure switch. And then when this pressure switch closes, proving that this inducer motor is running properly, then you should have 24 volts out of this side. But if you have a loose connection right here, then it may not be making it into this wire, or you might be having a lower voltage getting into this wire and not making it back to the control board. So a loose or corroded electrical connection could be the problem. When you have a lower efficiency furnace, uh, you're going to have typically a metal shroud around the inducer motor, and this tube right here could be clogged. The inside could be clogged completely solid, or these tubes could be clogged. So you want to try to pull them off and, and just see if you can push maybe a piece of thermostat wire in here or something like that. Uh, and in the tubes, you want to go ahead and blow those tubes out. If you are to ever blow tubes out, always make sure that you have the tube connected to the pressure switch disconnected before you're pressurizing any of these tubes. You don't want any pressure to end up going back into the pressure switch because that would, that would hurt it. It could be a clogged condensate trap right here and or a condensate line and what's happening is the the water that's created during the flame process that ends up backing up 
above the point where this tube is connected into the pressure switch. And I have a video on cleaning out the trap with either positive pressure blowing this way or with a vacuum sucking the water out of this trap. I have that link down in the description below. The last reason could be maybe the control board is not sending voltage to the inducer motor uh, even though maybe with a multimeter you read 24 volts from W to C. If you do read 24 volts from W to C that means that you have a call for heat and the inducer motor should be the first thing that turns on for, for your heating mode. But these little relays are typically black on the, uh, on the control board for a standard uh, PSE motor or a shaded pole uh, inducer motor. The control board uses this relay in order to send your high voltage over to the inducer motor and maybe the contacts inside are bad. So the control board thinks it's sending voltage over to the inducer, but the actual relay on the board is bad. So that could be another reason why you're getting a pressure switch error code. Variable speed inducer motors may not be receiving the signal from the control board as well. You know, you got to watch. It could be the actual variable speed inducer motor itself, or it could be the uh, control voltage coming from the control board. But to diagnose that, you really need to follow the manufacturer's literature for the variable speed inducer motors. If you're looking for any other videos on pressure switch testing, I have them all linked down in the description below. If you're looking for the tools that I use in this video, I also have them linked in the description below. And if you want to help support this HVACR training channel, click right here. If you want to subscribe, click here. And if you want to see another HVACR training video, click right here. Hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.